Hello Art Girls, welcome to your Term 2 Visual Diary project. We want you to be as creative and inventive as possible with finding materials and tools that we don't normally use as art materials. These things might be in your uh, shoe cleaning cupboard or your medicine cupboard or even in your kitchen. So they can be edible, they can be man-made, they can be anything that you would use to create tone, line, color, um, and to make surfaces that twinkle and glisten and sparkle with joy. So have a ball, stay up to date, make sure all your work is in your visual diary, and please ask us if there are any questions at all. Take care, girls. Bye. So guys, please keep on working in traditionally in your visual diary or on pieces of paper, and we can always paste that into your visual diary later. And explore all your mark making uh, techniques. If you have a look here, try and go from dark to light. Explore the, if you can get gradient, different kinds of marks. And have a go at making your own tools. You can see from these, some of these examples, different materials that you can find. You can bind them together to create really interesting textures. So experiment and explore with unusual things you find. It's important to try and find tools or make tools that feel different so that you can create a variety of marks. For example, a feather would feel very different in your hand to say a bunch of spoons or forks that are bound together. So aim to create variety as much as possible with tone and color and texture and even the, the tools themselves. Once you've completed each step in your visual diary, please take photos of your pages and then we'll upload that to your Google presentation of your visual diary. So we'll speak about that in more detail, but you'll find your Google presentation. Remember, you can edit your Google presentation, changing the background. You can choose an image, like I chose this one here for just a simple wooden background or maybe just a plain flat color background. So edit the, the text and and your, um, all the details within the slides to suit your style. So now let's talk about what steps are needed and what you're going to be doing for in your visual diary and then uploading it to your Google Slides. There'll be four steps in total. So you'll find when you find your Google Slides, you'll see it laid out in the four different steps. And now I'm going to chat to you about each of those steps. So step one is the brief. Add your own brief and checklist to the start of this assignment. Take a photo of where you wrote it down. So you could have written it down on a little piece of paper as you're listening to this video. Um, or you could actually use what you've written down and you can type it out into on, on as a note onto the slide. So it's your choice really. It's either photo or you can retype it out. Is it important? Why is it important to take down a brief or a checklist? So you can double check yourself at the end. Have I got all the steps? because there's quite a lot of information to remember, so right by the end of the project you can just double check yourself. Step two, add a photo of the colors you found at home that are not traditional art colors or paints or inks. So beetroot, beetroot juice, Worcester sauce, tomato sauce, tea, and please label your photos because otherwise it's just going to maybe look like a brown substance. What could it be? Marmite? Tea? <laughs> so let's go to step three, tools and marks. Spread your photos and answers over a few slides. Insert the photos of your tools you made um, and try and make full tools and add an example of what marks that your tool makes. This will help with answering the questions. So you can see there's quite a, a spiky little seed and you can see the marks that it makes and there's a whole lot of little um, pieces of string bound together and what marks they make. And you're using the colors obviously that you found like the beetroot and things like that. Make these notes alongside your photos. So now you're going to look at the name of the, the tool that you made or you found. Um, so what, what do you call it? What does it feel like to hold? Because every tool that you find will have a different feeling. So what does it feel like to you to actually hold and use it? Describe the descriptive words, guys. This Words that will help you describe the marks each tool makes. This will expand your vocabulary. 
look up the words in the online or traditional thesaurus and use them. Try and highlight and put them in brackets, highlight, because when you put them, the words down, make sure that we know that those are the words that you looked up in the dictionary or thesaurus, okay? So use them in a sentence where you describe, for example, the line, or, and then you describe the texture, and you describe the tone that your little marks make, okay? So for example, maybe you're going to look up the word broken, and you look at all of these, could it be fragmented? Yes, maybe. Torn? Hmm. Splintered? Good. And then you use that in a sentence. The line is fragmented, or it is crushed, it is snapped, it is torn, it is ruptured. You've got all these amazing words, and you put that into a sentence to describe the line. And look up words that you like that will describe the texture, look up other words that describe tone. This will help you a lot with your visual literacy. So also guys, what kind of mood do you think this tool could create? For example, these jagged lines create a, scent, a tense feeling, or these dark spots with these little sprinkles on the side, maybe they create like a magical, sort of twinkly kind of feeling, they look like fireworks or something like that. You need to describe what kind of mood that these marks make, okay? Because you're gonna be using these marks later for for the next step. Try and look, try and make your, when you do make your marks, work from light to dark, soft to hard marks with your tools to get a variety of the marks that they can make. Remember to do these above steps in the white, the text in the white for all four of your tools, okay? Important, choose the tools that will feel different in your hand when you hold them. They should create a contrast in the contrasting marks and contrasting feelings. For example, a pine cone is very different to a feather, and an egg beater is very different to a bundle of cotton buds, for example. Okay. You might have worked on a whole lot of different little pieces of paper. Once you put the, all of these little pieces of paper together, all of your experimentation and put them onto one slide just to show us how many crazy textures and this and that that you've explored and experimented with. Um, even if it's just on one page, that's fine. Um, for now, we get to your step four. This is the last step. So this is an abstract composition of the mood you're feeling. So somewhere I'd really like you to discuss what mood you're feeling. What are you going for? Is it going to be a dark, moody feeling? Or is it light and vibrant and happy? Discuss how the marks will relate to the mood that you are trying to create. Are they jagged marks and to create that moody composition? Or are they they're quite peaceful, flowing marks to create that sense of a whimsical mood? Please add this little paragraph on a separate slide, either before you put the final composition on its own slide or afterwards. Now let's look at the final composition that you're going to be working on. For your final composition for step four, I'd like you to please consider the line and tone and how you create contrast within your composition. So even though it's abstract, you're still putting something together that creates a mood and feeling that draws your eye into quiet areas. If you see this image on the left, those big circles, there's a quiet space within those circles and the more detailed it becomes, the more busy it becomes, it creates a different kind of mood or, um, or energy. So consider those kind of aspects to composition. So let's recap. Your first slide will be your title slide, and then you can see it is spread out within the four different steps. So let's go through those steps just one more time. And let's look at step one, the brief and checklist of, in your own words. Step two will be pick of the colors that you found. So it's brief, and then the colors, like the Worcester sauce and the tomato sauce and all that kind of thing, that'll be that step. Step three is the tools that you made and the marks or found and all the marks that they make and the words that you found. So it's that exercise, which can be spread over a couple of slides. So it's that step and then of course all the marks, the examples. Step four is the abstract artwork with your mark making. And remember somewhere either before this page or afterwards, you're going to just explain the mood that you're trying to create. Okay. The deadline for this task will be the 13th of July, and on the 13th of July we'll be handing out your next task. So hang on to your tools, guys! Hi girls, it's Miss Cooper here. I just wanted to say that I hope you enjoy the new project and have some fun. 
and we look forward to seeing the work that you do. Bye.